all, guys, I'm gonna have to warn you. This is actually a really sad video. This is a story about a thing called microplasma and the really hard lessons it taught us as farmers. You may remember last year, we ended up taking our chickens to a vet because some of them were sick. When we got to the vet, they actually had us kill them on the spot and then made us drive them down to the university. Okay, here's the deal. Right now, I am driving to Urbana, Illinois to bring my two now dead chickens to have a necropsy done to make sure they don't have the avian flu. I feel like I'm being punked a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that really was quite an insane process. It really seems like there needs to be a better way to handle sick chickens. But regardless, they did not have the avian flu, but what they were diagnosed with was this thing called microplasma. And so this microplasma thing is kind of like having a bad cold. It's like sneezing, goopy eyes, labored breathing. Their eggs and meat are still fine for human consumption, but there usually is a decreased egg production. And it can sometimes lead to death when there is a change in environment. So the vet ended up giving us some medication and we gave it to them and we kind of thought that we had things under control. Next summer came and with it came a new flock of birds. And some new piglets. And our older hens continued to provide us eggs for our awesome customers although it seemed like they might not be producing as much as they should be. All right, we're doing deliveries today, and I have two helpers with me. Dylan is running out to the car, to the people's houses to deliver them, right, buddy? What? Did you find the bag for Sarah? Yeah. All right. So in our seemingly never-ending quest for more and more chickens, we ended up teaming up with Farmer Josh. Josh has several acres of beautiful pasture, which would make a wonderful home for some chickens. So we ended up moving a couple hundred chickens over to Josh's property. And that's when things started to take a turn for the worse. So just a couple weeks after moving all the chickens over to Josh's property, they all came down with microplasma as well. And this time we were losing tens of chickens every day and they went from giving us several dozen eggs a day to literally going to zero eggs a day. Well, zero eggs and hundreds of dollars in feed every week. It just was not gonna be a viable business. So in an attempt to nurse our girls back to health, we decided to bring them back to our farm. And with Josh's chickens back on our farm, we started to try everything we could. We made this crazy mixture, which was mostly ginger, garlic, and cayenne pepper. It's in there. It's spicy pepper for the chickens to get healthy tummies. That's good. Ooh. All right, dump it in. It's spicy. So we gave that to him for a couple weeks. And then there was a study that showed how this ancient herb from Asia completely eradicated microplasma. So we tried to put some of that in their water for a couple weeks. Unfortunately, there was no change. We even tried some homeopathy treatments. Is that how you say that? Homeopathy? 
you know, these little tiny pills. You put that in their water. Apparently it's supposed to change something. I mean, I'm not hating on it. It just seems like this little pill is going to <laughs> cure an entire flock of this. But we were desperate. We were trying anything we could to try to nurse these guys back to health. But at the end of the day, nothing was changing. And after consulting with farmers who have way more experience than us, the increasingly obvious solution that I was trying so desperately to avoid was to call them and start fresh. Yeah, I don't know what to say. This is definitely the hardest decision I've ever had to make. I don't know, is that being dramatic? It feels like it right now. So most of our laying hens didn't have enough meat on their bones to make it worth it to harvest so that we could eat them. But we did have 30 or 40 hens that were also considered meat chickens. So we decided to start with them and at least it wasn't gonna be a complete waste. And just a little heads up for the squeamish, I am going to show the chickens being killed. Although, I'm going to try to be as considerate about it as possible. Oh. So, as if this wasn't an odd enough already, um, we took the pigs in this morning to the butcher or freezer camp, which was what we were planning on doing, but it's just, it's hard for the kids when, you know, we lose animals on the farm. But then we also just heard that one of our barn cats was found on the road. So Mary Kate's inside with very, very sad crying kids right now while I'm out here trying to take care of this business. Definitely been easier days being farmers. And then the next day, my dad, Mary Kate, and myself put our heads down and set out to take care of the rest of the birds. Oh man, I've been really not looking forward to this. The other birds were a little bit easier because we were kind of using them, we were able to use some of those for meat, which made it feel like it wasn't a complete loss. But this um, is something that I just, I don't, I really, really don't want to do but I'm afraid that's where we're at. If we want to solve this problem, which is something that we're gonna have to do, so it's been weighing on me really heavy. I just want to get this day over with and move on. Oh yeah, now it's yeah. It's
Oh my gosh, that was hard. Or is hard. We're probably like a third of the way done. Man, just try not to think about it. It's by far one of the hardest things I've ever done. There's one chicken Bradley and Biscuit were chasing and I was, I was right on the chopping block and the chicken was scared of the Bradley and Biscuit so she came like right underneath like me and my axe because she thought he was she thought she was safe there oh. So then, how did our chickens get it in the first place? Like, what was the lesson that we had to learn as farmers? We obviously don't know for sure, but we believe that the chickens contracted the infection from some other of the hens that we brought onto our farm. You know, keep in mind, like, we were constantly just trying to find laying hens from any anywhere. And it was shortly after taking in, like, about 30 hens from someone else um, and bringing them onto our property that we started noticing some of the symptoms. And so this is the big lesson learned, is that you never mix flocks, especially if the chickens are from a farm or a family that you aren't 100% sure about. And if you're in a situation where you absolutely have to merge the flocks, just keep the new flocks separate for a couple weeks to make sure that they don't show any signs of symptoms because they can look healthy when you go to pick them up, but the change in environment can trigger some of the symptoms. So. If you have to merge them, just keep them separate for at least a couple weeks. You know, I feel like I've been somehow initiated as a farmer through this horrible experience. I'm kind of looking at this as the end of phase one of our farming experience. You know, where phase one was, you know, just trying, trying all the things, trying all the different farming, trying all the different animals and doing it all on a bootstrap budget, right? Where you're just trying to skate by. And now, after being, you know, initiated as a farmer, we're entering into phase two. You know, we have a little bit of a better understanding with how to take care of chickens and how to give them their absolute best life and what infrastructure is gonna be required to properly scale up our chicken operation. All of this that we had really no idea about before. We now have a better idea for what we're trying to do with Cockadoodle. We want Cockadoodle to simply be the best, most convenient way to access local food for everybody. You know, this was all a really, really hard lesson to learn. But you know, through this all, we're more optimistic than ever. We have some really incredible things happening, and I'm really excited to have you guys joining us on our journey. Thanks. We'll see you next time.